So I want to show in this video some simulations we're doing with the autonomous car. So you can see my car driving around here, uh, and I'm running a controller on it called the Safe Open Loop Circle. So this controller is sending commands up until the vehicle gets to a certain speed and then asking the vehicle to stop. So one thing you may have noticed here is that I just killed this model, killed that controller, uh, and the car kept going. It didn't stop. And so now we're, I've started the controller again, and then it came to a stop. So it's, it's sort of trying to pretend like it's doing stop-and-go traffic right now. Uh, but once I get it up to speed, again, I'll press Control-C here, and you'll see that the, the vehicle will just keep on going. So this isn't great. The reason that this happens is because uh, we implemented our stop-and-go controller uh, and some of our other controllers in Simulink, and Simulink's ROS default behavior is that uh, if you don't receive a new message that you keep using the last message that you got. So the, the message itself is latched. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install now this dead man switch that uh, is designed to set my velocity input to zero uh, and uh, I'm, I need to set a few parameters here. So I need to tell what my timeout is in seconds and I need to also tell what's the uh, what's the, the simulation time step, because I'm actually getting how long it's been by counting individual time steps. So this dead man switch actually only works on fixed time uh, simulation because I'm incrementing this counter. So now you'll be able to see uh, that, uh, oh yeah, and, and one more important thing, uh, I'm not running this controller with Simulink in the loop. I'm actually uh, generating the code, building ROS code from the Simulink model. And this is allowing us to, to run without Simulink in the loop. So one of the benefits of this is that um, you can save a lot of processor time by not having to have Simulink start up uh, and all the overhead that runs with Simulink. So we got our code generated here. Uh, I'm going to close this out. And uh, you also you have to have ROS core running, by the way, uh, when you run the Simulink code generator, because it's checking to make sure what the, the message types are. It runs ROS message info, et cetera. So I'm running the, uh, the compiler now. Uh, we get a lot of great warnings here. I try to tell my students usually that warnings are still errors you need to fix them, but warnings in generated code I can't really do anything about. Um, okay, so now I'm uh, rerunning my controller, rerunning, uh, starting up the launch file, and then I typically don't run Gazebo uh, unless I need to see something. I run Gazebo server in the background, but not the client. So we've just spawned a new model, and now it should take off. So you'll remember before that, uh, yeah, and it really takes off. So you can remember before that uh, I would hit Control C on this controller. I'm going to actually run uh, ROS node kill in a second to kill the controller because it starts by default in the launch file. Um, so you'll remember that I got it up to speed and hit Control C, and then when I did that, the vehicle just kept going. So now we've got this dead man switch, which means that if we don't have a new message after uh, 0.2 seconds. That, the, that I want the vehicle to, to slow to a velocity of zero. So you can see here, even though I stopped the vehicle, or even though I stopped the controller, that now the vehicle has stopped. So when I start the controller again, the vehicle starts back up. I'm gonna wait until it gets up to speed, it's going pretty fast, and then kill it. And you can see actually now that it stops. So this is the actual behavior that we have in our vehicle, uh, but we didn't have this behavior simulated in our software in the loop. And so now I've, uh, what we've done is the ability to show that uh, we can get a similar kind of behavior with software in the loop simulation that we're getting with our physical platform.